What is up, everybody? It is Ross Cessna, the Oracle of Motion, here with you again. Um, I'm wearing the same shirt as I was in the video last week because I'm recording these back to back because my schedule's super busy. It's not going to impact the outcome. Um, and I've seen this, I've done other videos like this, and it doesn't affect it lining up for other people. So real quick, I've changed the format of how I'm doing stuff. If you didn't see the last video or listen to the last podcast, the way that I'm doing things now is actually how tarot has really helped me, which is using it more as a mirror for your own mind to help you sort stuff out. Not so much a divination tool, but telling you to look at these things in your own life and see what you can come up with. See the shifts that you can make as a result of these. Um, so we're going to dive into it following is the first one that comes up and it says loyalty adaptability cooperation trust reliability sensitivity to others service receiving guidance and if you look there there's this kind of colorful connection between all of these individuals and their ability to function as a unit a unit i don't know why i said unit like that <laughs> so one of the things that i notice from a lot of people and this again includes myself is the ability to not feel part of a group. Um, and part of feeling like a group is the ability to be adaptable to other people's needs, the ability to cooperate, having trust in other people, uh, being reliable, um, being sensitive to other people's needs, acting from a sense of service, um, the ability to receive guidance, not just give it, to receive guidance and, and then loyalty, sticking with people despite how difficult circumstances get. So I've worked my ass off in cultivating a lot of these traits. And I won't say that I'm perfect at it. I'm not. I won't say that um, following other people is easy for me. It isn't. And I'll, I'll say this as well. One of the things that really is a big, big barrier for me personally, and maybe y'all can relate in, in this, is actually trusting people. Um, many of us have been let down a lot by people and a lot of people operate on that same premise. I was talking to my mom the other day about uh, how oftentimes people in, in any kind of friendship, family relationship, romantic relationship, anything like that, oftentimes um, when people's needs haven't been getting met, they act in ways that makes it even harder to get their needs met because a lot of people are operating on kind of um, emotional starvation, like actually getting their needs met, they respond in a, a defensive position for everything and it perpetuates this whole problem. And this is kind of the same way. A lot of people that need companionship have been let down by so many people and have been hurt by so many people, it's difficult to let the walls down. Um, this is pretty much asking myself and anybody listening to really look at that um, be more adaptable, be able to cooperate more, be more trusting, be more reliable, still be sensitive to other people, um, view it from a, a, a space of service, and be able to receive guidance. So part of the, the big hang-up is, so oftentimes we focus on what other people aren't doing for us, and we, we fall back on this, well, I always do this for other people, nobody else ever does this for me. Sometimes you have to suck it up and do it regardless because if you if you always operate from the position of needing 100 percent reciprocity you're going to get burned out you're going to be alone you're going to be isolated that's not how life works and it goes into this whole concept again that we cut here in the new age positive vibes only what a toxic fucking attitude that is positive vibes only um if you don't have positive vibes you can't hang out what a negative thing to say um, like there's inherent negativity in that. And the funny, 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 funny thing about all of that is people that are in those circles, they believe this whole thing that what you put out is what you get back, blah, 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 blah. But they fail to see the connection of they're attracting people that are exactly like them in some capacity or potentially the negativity that they're receiving is from these people that are preaching positivity, judging other people, trying to solve these other people's problems because they're optimistically bypassing their own bullshit. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I got off topic on following. That's what came out. That's what you're getting. Um, we're going to move into the Rumi Oracle. 
The horizons you've promised will be brilliant with signs. I am sick of shadows. Blind me with you. Hmm. This is saying you're going to be getting a lot of signs from the universe about the course of action that you're going on, but you have to be present with it. Um, quit acting from your wounds is the other thing. I am sick of shadows. Quit acting from your wound. Blind me with you. Be fucking real. Um, step into who you really are. Quit acting from this space of this is this is the dark me. This is the ego me. Ego is a mental construct. It's it's not real, um, and it's incredibly unhealthy. And it's a flawed belief structure. And when you look at how people associate it with Eastern uh, philosophy and Eastern religions, most understanding of Eastern philosophy and Eastern religions is misinterpreted, misunderstood, and it's cherry picked ideas. Um, so what it comes down to, this is going to be a shocker to a lot of you. Western people don't really know what they're talking about when it comes to Eastern religion and, and philosophy. And I'm going to say this. I don't claim to. I claim to maybe know more because I, I'm not um, coming from a place of study, but from practical application. But I also understand that that sounds incredibly um, arrogant and there probably is fault, fault in my logic. So, um, be yourself, hold yourself accountable, be present with who you are, but you gotta, you gotta, um, pay attention to what's going on. We're going to move into a tarot card, the sun card. The sun really is about, it's one of the most positive tarot cards in all of tarot in regards to your personal self. It's about Finding gratitude, finding grace, looking at the power of your own heart, focusing on the good things, but not being optimistically, um, not optimistically bypassing stuff, being able to look at things for what they are and integrate that experience. Um, recently, uh, when this comes out, I'll probably be almost three weeks ago, my grandpa had passed away um, and it hurt in a sense, but at the same time, looking at it holistically and pulling myself back from the situation, first off, it's part of life. Secondly, he was old. He was slowing down. His ability to live and function like he would be comfortable doing had diminished, so there's a blessing in that. And also, there is this whole sense of, for me, being in recovery, not having to get high over it, not having to run from it, not losing my shit over it, being able to be strong for other people, which my grandpa would have been proud of me being able to show up and be there, um, being having been present in his life, being able to literally be there when he passed away, um, that was a gift in a sense because there was a time in my life where I wasn't there for anybody when they passed. There's been three other deaths in my family and I progressively was further and further removed from all of them. Um, but yeah, and the other blessing in that is not having regret with how I spent the last little bit of his life together with him. I was able to show up and drive him around and um, literally be present in this man's life who, who was a big part of mine. Um, and again, I'm off topic, but that's like real optimism. It's not, it's not like sugarcoating everything, saying this is, this sucked but there is still some good stuff in there. Um, and realistically, that's the cycle of life and it's going to create new opportunities for other things to come in. And there's a lot of wisdom that came from it and all things considered, my grandpa went well. Like optimism isn't this um, like doe-eyed enthusiasm about things. It's being able to look at life in an honest and real way and keep going on. For me, maybe yours is different. And then we are going to come up to six of vessels. So vessels are cups in this. Cups are all about emotions. The water in this is about emotions too. And the card itself is called reunion. So it's about the sense of coming home. And given all of these other cards, so with the following thing, um, <laughs> I got off on a tangent with it. But it could also be following yourself, especially when you follow it up with the next card where it's saying, get in tune with you, tap in with you, 
quit following the shadow, be who you are. And then that comes up with the sun and the sun's just saying, see the good in stuff, um, but you don't have to sugarcoat everything. Enjoy your life experience. This is something else I'm going to say um, because it's something my grandpa said and it relates to this. Every day I wake up and put my shoes on is a good day. So the circumstances of your day can still be shit. Um, and you can be honest about it. This sucked. Um, but you can still be optimistic in the sense of I'm alive. I have gratitude for life. I have gratitude for the things that I do have. And despite these unpleasant things, I'm going to keep going um, because that's what I do. And the reunion aspect of this is coming back to a true sense of yourself. And that's really, uh, this reading's super powerful for me because it's right um, where I'm at, really getting in touch with some of the rawness of who I was in active addiction, um, but not in an unhealthy way. Uh, but it's also in a more pure crystallized sense now. The reunion aspect of this is really coming in tune with who you are, not who you think you needed to be in order to receive love, respect, and appreciation because for a lot of us, we we disconnect with ourselves at some point in order to be who we think we need to be for love. And uh, yeah, I can't really say much more on this. I'm kind of getting choked up with it a little bit. So I really hope that this helps people. If you want a reading like this about yourself, I'd be more than happy to do so. And although I'm doing this from a, a more um, integrative and uh, personal approach, although I'm doing it that way, um, rather than divination, there's a lot more to be gained from this and you're not going to be able to get the similar experience elsewhere. Um, and it will probably help you a lot more than knowing if Bobby loves you or things like that, because there's a richness to using tarot, how it was originally intended like this, more so than asking if you're going to get the promotion at work because the promotion at work is transitory understanding yourself in this way and having somebody with experience guide you through that that's going to stick with you it's a great investment um if you want to book it you can book it online i've reduced my services to just this um <laughs> this service which is a little bit of tarot reading a little bit of coaching and then there is a follow-up reiki session after um, everything just to help you heal and uh kind of get you all cleaned up after you hear some truths that might be a little unpleasant. And with that, I hope you all have a blessed day. Peace.